Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where history comes alive through the lens of AI. I'm your host, Chuck. And I'm Marco. Today, we're diving into the turbulent seas of the early 18th century to unravel the legend of Blackbeard, the most feared pirate of his time. I, I Captain Marco. But before we set sail, remember to subscribe, rate, and share our podcast. It helps us keep the ship afloat. Edward Teach, or Thatch, better known as Blackbeard, was born around 1680. His early life is shrouded in mystery, much like a foggy night on the high seas. Maybe he popped out of Davy Jones' locker. Could be Chuck. Not much is known about his family, but it's believed he was born into a respectable family in Bristol, England. This likely influenced his later life as a pirate, combining gentlemanly manners with ruthless piracy. Let's delve deeper into how Edward Teach, a man from possibly a well-to-do family, became the fearsome Blackbeard. The transformation is as intriguing as it is complex. Absolutely, Chuck. The shift began during the War of the Spanish Succession. Teach, a young man then, was part of the British privateers. These were essentially pirates sanctioned by the government to attack enemy ships. A legal form of piracy. That's right. Teach learned the ropes, quite literally, on a privateer ship based in Jamaica, a hotbed for privateering activities. He honed his seafaring skills, which were crucial in his later life as a pirate. And it's during this period that Teach would have witnessed the thin line between privateering and piracy. With the war's end in 1713, many privateers found themselves unemployed and turned to piracy, a path that Teach himself followed. Exactly, Marco. The end of the war left a surplus of skilled seamen who had a taste for adventure, combat, and, let's not forget, the lucrative allure of plunder. Now, Teach begins to associate with infamous pirates of that era. He sails under Captain Benjamin Hornigold, a renowned pirate. Hornigold saw potential in Teach and took him under his wing. This mentorship was pivotal in Teach's development into Blackbeard. Under Hornigold's guidance, Teach learned the art of piracy, navigation, leadership, and the strategic art of capturing ships. It was during this time that Teach started to cultivate his fearsome image. And it wasn't just about plundering. Teach understood the importance of reputation and psychological warfare in piracy. He began to develop his terrifying persona, which would later become the hallmark of Blackbeard. Right. His rise to notoriety began when he captured a French merchant vessel, La Concorde, in 1717. This was a turning point. He modified the ship, renaming it Queen Anne's Revenge, and armed it heavily, creating a formidable vessel that matched his growing ambition. This marks the complete transformation of Edward Teach from a privateer to the dreaded Blackbeard, setting the stage for his reign of terror over the seas. What a journey! From the law-abiding seas to the lawless waters of piracy. Now, let's embark on the most thrilling part of Blackbeard's life, his era as a pirate. After seizing La Concorde and transforming it into Queen Anne's Revenge, Teach fully embraced his new identity as Blackbeard. That's right, Chuck. With Queen Anne's Revenge, Blackbeard embarked on a reign of terror that is the stuff of legends. He patrolled the waters between the West Indies and the American colonies, capturing ships and amassing wealth. His approach was both cunning and brutal. Blackbeard was known for his psychological tactics. He would create a fearsome spectacle, with slow matches burning in his beard and hair, giving him a demonic appearance. This often scared his targets into surrendering without a fight. And it wasn't just about his appearance. Blackbeard was a strategic mastermind. He knew the shipping routes like the back of his hand and used this knowledge to plan his attacks meticulously. His fleet grew as he captured more ships. At one point, he had a small armada under his command, including the captured English sloop Adventure. He was more than a pirate, he was a commander of a pirate fleet. One of his most notorious acts was the blockade of Charleston, South Carolina, in 1718. Blackbeard and his fleet blockaded the port for nearly a week, capturing several ships. He demanded a ransom of medical supplies, a rather unusual request for a pirate. Maybe he had a pirate's code of health and safety. Maybe Chuck. But this incident shows Blackbeard's shrewdness. He knew the value of hostages and used them to his advantage. 
despite his fearsome reputation, there are no confirmed accounts of Blackbeard killing captives. He relied on his formidable image to avoid bloodshed. A smart move, ensuring he stayed a step ahead of the law and retaliation. Indeed. But Blackbeard's life wasn't just battles and plundering. He was also involved in complex dealings with colonial officials. Some historians suggest he had a tacit agreement with Charles Eden, the governor of North Carolina, providing him sanctuary in exchange for a share of the loot. His time in North Carolina was a strategic retreat, a chance to lay low and enjoy his ill-gotten gains. But a pirate's life is never far from danger. The British Navy was constantly on his tail, and rival pirates were always a threat. His reign was intense but short-lived. Blackbeard's career as a pirate lasted only about two years, but his impact was monumental, shaping the golden age of piracy. From a fearsome appearance to strategic blockades and unusual demands, Blackbeard's life as a pirate was as dramatic as it was impactful. Blackbeard's career, though brief, was marked by several legendary exploits that cemented his reputation. Let's dive into some of these defining moments. First up, the blockade of Charleston. In May 1718, Blackbeard led a fleet of four ships and blockaded the port of Charleston in South Carolina, one of the busiest ports in the American colonies. This was a bold and unprecedented move for a pirate. Absolutely Marco. For about a week, Blackbeard captured every ship that entered or left the harbor, amassing a substantial loot. But the most audacious part of this blockade was his demand for a ransom, not gold, but a chest of medicine. This unusual demand has puzzled historians. It's speculated that Blackbeard or his crew needed the medicine due to an outbreak of disease on board. Nonetheless, the town complied, and Blackbeard released the hostages, proving his strategic acumen and his ability to instill fear. Another notable moment was the capture of the French slave ship La Concorde, which he converted into his flagship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. This was a significant upgrade for Blackbeard, equipping him with a vessel that was both fast and heavily armed. The transformation of La Concorde into Queen Anne's Revenge was a masterstroke. He increased its armament to 40 guns, making it one of the most formidable pirate ships ever. It became the symbol of his power and the terror he could unleash. Then there's the infamous beaching of Queen Anne's Revenge. In 1718, near Beaufort Inlet, North Carolina, Blackbeard ran the ship aground. Some believe this was a deliberate act to downsize his fleet and crew, possibly to increase his share of the plunder. That's right, Chuck. Some of his crew were marooned on a sandbar, leading to speculation that Blackbeard was cutting loose excess crew to consolidate his wealth. A ruthless but clever tactic, if true. And let's not forget Blackbeard's final stand at Ocracoke Island. We'll cover this in detail in our next segment, but it's worth mentioning here for its sheer drama. Blackbeard, outnumbered and cornered, fought fiercely against Lieutenant Maynard's forces in a battle that would become the stuff of pirate legend. Each of these moments showcases different aspects of Blackbeard's character, his strategic mind, his boldness, and his ability to command and instill fear. His actions during these events are key to understanding why he became the most infamous pirate of his time. Indeed Marco. These famous moments paint a picture of a man who was not just a ruthless pirate but also a master strategist and a charismatic leader. The tale of Blackbeard reaches its climax in November 1718, at Ocracoke Island. It's a story not just of a battle, but of intrigue, betrayal, and the end of an era. After his escapades, Blackbeard had briefly retired, accepting a pardon from Governor Charles Eden of North Carolina. But a pirate's life is hard to leave behind. By the fall of 1718, he was back at sea, raiding ships off the American coast. The governor of Virginia, Alexander Spotswood, saw Blackbeard's return to piracy as a threat to the colonies and commerce. Spotswood was determined to end Blackbeard's reign. He organized a secret expedition to capture or kill the infamous pirate, led by Lieutenant Robert Maynard of the Royal Navy. Maynard set out with two sloops, the Ranger and the Jane. The Royal Navy's involvement marked a significant escalation. This wasn't just another pirate hunt, it was a mission to take down the most feared pirate of the time. On November 22, Maynard and his men found Blackbeard anchored at Ocracoke Island. Blackbeard's crew was outnumbered, but they were not going to give up without a fight. As Maynard's ships approached, Blackbeard's cannons roared. The initial exchange of cannon fire was intense. 
Maynard's ship, the Jane, took significant damage. Knowing he was outgunned, Maynard used a cunning tactic. He hid most of his men below deck, making Blackbeard believe he had inflicted more casualties than he actually had. As Blackbeard boarded the Jane, expecting little resistance, he was met with a fierce counterattack. A brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat ensued. Blackbeard and his men fought ferociously, but the element of surprise had turned the tide. Blackbeard himself was a force to be reckoned with. It said he was shot five times and suffered numerous cuts before finally succumbing. His death marked the end of the battle. Maynard later displayed Blackbeard's head on his ship's bowsprit, a grim reminder of the fate awaiting other pirates. Blackbeard's death was symbolic, marking the beginning of the end for the golden age of piracy. It sent a strong message to other pirates in the maritime community that the days of unchecked piracy were coming to an end. His demise also sparked numerous legends and stories, contributing to the myth of Blackbeard that persists to this day. His life and death have been romanticized and dramatized, often overshadowing the brutal reality of piracy. Indeed Marco Blackbeard's legacy is a complex tapestry of fact and fiction, fear and fascination. His life story is a testament to the turbulent times he lived in and his extraordinary role in maritime history. Blackbeard's death marked the end of his reign, but it was just the beginning of his legend. Let's explore the lasting impact of this infamous pirate. Absolutely Chuck. Blackbeard's influence extends far beyond his lifetime. He became an icon of the golden age of piracy, embodying the era's lawlessness, adventure, and mystery. One major aspect of his legacy is in popular culture. Blackbeard has been immortalized in books, movies, and folklore. He's often portrayed as the quintessential pirate, fearsome, cunning, and larger than life. Indeed, from Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island to the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, elements of Blackbeard's persona are evident in many fictional pirates. His image, the imposing figure with a black beard and slow-burning fuses, has become synonymous with the pirate archetype. Blackbeard also left a lasting impact on maritime history. His exploits have been studied for their strategic brilliance. He understood not just how to capture ships, but also how to use his reputation to instill fear and gain an advantage. And let's not forget his impact on naval and colonial policy. His reign prompted a crackdown on piracy, leading to more robust maritime law enforcement. Governments realized that they needed a stronger naval presence to protect commerce and suppress piracy. Absolutely Marco Blackbeard's death symbolized the shift in the balance of power on the seas from pirates to national navies. It marked a turning point in the fight against piracy. His legacy also persists in academia and historical research. The discovery of the wreck believed to be Queen Anne's revenge off the coast of North Carolina in 1996 sparked renewed interest in studying pirate history and archaeology. The artifacts recovered from the wreck provide invaluable insights into the life of pirates in the early 18th century. From weapons to personal belongings, these relics paint a vivid picture of life aboard a pirate ship. And let's not overlook the tourism and cultural heritage aspects. Blackbeard has become a figure of local folklore and pride, especially in areas like North Carolina. Museums, festivals, and tours dedicated to his life and piracy in general attract thousands of visitors annually. His story, while rooted in piracy and violence, also speaks to broader themes like rebellion against authority, the search for freedom, and the allure of adventure. It's these universal themes that continue to captivate people's imagination. In the end, Blackbeard's legacy is a blend of historical fact and mythological embellishment. He remains a figure of fascination, symbolizing an era that continues to intrigue and inspire. As we close this chapter on Blackbeard, we're reminded of how history can be shaped not just by actions, but also by the legends that grow from them. Thanks for joining us on this swashbuckling adventure through Blackbeard's life. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the History AI podcast. Until next time, keep your compass true and your cutlass sharp. From the mind behind the History AI podcast comes an electrifying journey into the past. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Dive into a tale where Benjamin Franklin, America's beloved inventor, takes an unexpected journey through time. But with his leap, he unleashes a powerful ripple.
Now, with dark forces lurking in the shadows, harnessing this energy to shatter and enslave the world, it's a race against time. Will Franklin fix the future? Or will history rewrite itself? Uncover the secrets. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Time has never been more fragile. On Amazon now.